Righto. Well, as many of my viewers probably know, recently there's been a lot of talk about de-googling Android and using only free and open source software on your Android device. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you something that takes everything a step further. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Replicant. Now, Replicant is a completely free and open source distribution of Android, which is completely GNU approved. So that means that this distribution has no proprietary software whatsoever in it. No proprietary apps, no proprietary system components, nothing like that at all. Now, consequently, that does mean that if you install this on your device, a lot of hardware features just aren't going to work. For instance, this is a Samsung Galaxy S3, and on this particular device, the front camera doesn't work, and neither does the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. And the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth not working is pretty common among all of the devices which this works on. In fact, I think most of the devices do not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And as a lot of people who use completely free and open source Linux desktop operating systems probably know, that's a pretty common thing because there are very few Wi-Fi chipsets that work with free and open source software. Now, as I said earlier, this device is a Samsung Galaxy S3. And if you're thinking that that's quite an old device, that is because it is. Replicant doesn't really support any newer devices. In fact, I think this is actually one of the newest devices which Replicant supports. Now there's various reasons for that, but sadly if you want to use completely free and open source software, you will have to use an older device. And that's true in the desktop space as well. Now this device actually isn't running entirely free and open source software, even though it has Replicant installed on it. Because unfortunately the modem still runs proprietary software and the bootloader is also still proprietary and sadly there's nothing that the Replicant team can do about that. Now there are efforts to to run a free software bootloader on here, but those aren't really progressing very fast and it's kind of unknown whether or not we'll ever see that. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at Replicant on this device. So as you can see, it looks pretty much like a standard Android device, which because it is, uh, this is actually based on Android Marshmallow, which is quite an old version of Android. In fact, it's several versions behind at this point. I think you can still get away with using it, but consequently that does mean that in terms of security updates, you are several years behind on Replicant, which is a shame. Now, there is a version of Replicant based on Android 10, which will be coming out fairly soon-ish. I think they're kind of still working on it. And there's also a new release candidate based on Android Marshmallow, so hopefully that should bring some new security updates as well as some other stuff. But right now, you're kind of stuck running an older version of Android if you want to use completely free and open source software. Now, as you can see, this will work as a phone because as you can see, my SIM card is recognized. Although, as I said earlier, no Wi-Fi. If you want to use Wi-Fi, you need an adapter to connect a USB Wi-Fi adapter to the phone, which is probably going to look slightly ridiculous. And the problem with that is it's quite difficult to actually find a Wi-Fi adapter that will work. There's only a handful of devices that will work. Most of the ones that are like readily available and you can easily get your hands on are unfortunately quite expensive, which is why I don't have one. But you can of course use your mobile data and I know a lot of people have unlimited data plans now. So if that's you, you won't have any issues. Now, as I said earlier, this is based on Android 6 Marshmallow, but it's also based on Lineage OS, which means there's not going to be any bloat or any stuff like that. It pretty much just is Lineage OS with the proprietary bits removed. Now, my first impression when I booted this up is the animations are pretty slow. Now, there's a reason for that, and the reason is because the graphics drivers are open source and don't perform as well as the proprietary ones, which is to be expected, but it's a little bit of a letdown, I suppose. Now, basic 2D stuff will work, but if you download any 3D games or anything like that, they're just not gonna work. Now, I believe that some devices supported by replicants, such as the Samsung Galaxy S2, have better graphic support, but it still doesn't work with you know, 3D stuff, it just means it's a little bit faster. Um, another frustrating thing about the graphics I've noticed is very often there is actually screen tearing. Now, I have never seen screen tearing on a phone, but running Replicant, this phone has it. Now, that's a little bit annoying, but I think you could probably get used to it. And if we go into an app like the Settings app, you can see that sometimes the graphics performance isn't that bad. So if we just open this up, as you can see, 
it actually scrolls relatively smoothly. So as I say, if you use a device like this, you're gonna to have to make some compromises, but maybe to you that's worth it. So as you can see in the multitasking view, the previews don't work, probably also graphics related, but it's still usable. So with that said, let's take a look at what apps you get on here. Now I say this is based on Lineage OS, so there's not any you know, huge amount of bloat or anything, you just get what you need. You get a audio FX program, so if you like listening to music, that could be useful for you. You get a browser, now, I believe that this is based on WebKit or something, which is indirectly based on Chromium. So if you want to preserve your freedoms, you probably don't want to use this browser. It's also probably horribly outdated at this point, because as I say, this version of Android hasn't got security updates in quite a while. In fact, I think the last one that was pushed out by Replicant was 2017. So this browser is going to be quite outdated and quite insecure at this point. But if we scroll through this Wikipedia article, you can see even despite the free software graphics drivers it's pretty fast so these graphics drivers are quite impressive and um, as is the rest of the performance of the device for its age now let's just go ahead and try and load up a web page let's just spam in some text and hit enter now this device isn't capable of 4g i know that there is a device that is capable of 4g that's in the works by replicant but for now if you want to run this you're going to have a 3g only experience but as you can see it wasn't too bad and if we scroll through here you can see it's pretty smooth for some strange reason the default search engine is google which yikes but i suppose you can easily change that and you should honestly probably just change this browser generally i would recommend that you replace it with firefox or something like that if we keep going you get a calculator and a calendar normal phone stuff next up we have something more notable which is a camera now as i said the front camera does not work and if you try to switch to it you need to go into the settings and clear the app's data because it will totally break the app and another thing if i just show this to you real quick the viewfinder is quite slow. If I just put my hand in there so you can kind of see how quick it is. I don't know what causes that, but I've noticed it a lot in a lot of PinePhone operating systems as well. And video recording will just totally crash the phone. Now, what I will say is the photos produced on this phone are actually okay. There's nothing wrong with them. This is a totally serviceable camera. It'll probably do everything you want it to if you just want a basic phone camera. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But if you shoot video and that kind of stuff, this device is probably not going to be very usable for you. Let's go ahead and exit out the camera. It does take a second. You get a clock. As far as I'm aware, alarms and stuff do work. You've got a contacts app, standard contacts app, downloads, email all standard Lineage OS stuff. You get the F-Droid store, which that's actually included by default, and this is where you're going to get all of your free and open source apps from. The version of the F-Droid store that came with this was quite old, as you can imagine. It was supposed to update like itself in the update section, but I actually needed to go onto the F-Droid website and download the newest APK because the updater didn't seem to want to work. But after that, it seemed to work pretty much fine. Although I didn't really want to download too many apps because as I say, I'm stuck using mobile data until I can find a Wi-Fi adapter. But as a whole, F-Droid does seem to work okay on here. And I think most apps still support Android 6. Scrolling is smooth, as you can see, it's not bad. Uh, also, this does come with the F-Droid privileged extension. So you don't have to mess around with installing APKs or anything like that. It just works, which is fantastic. If we keep going, you get a file manager, standard stuff. You get a gallery app which this actually looks like a much older version of Android for some strange reason. I seem to remember the gallery app included with Lineage OS looking much newer, but maybe it was updated sometime between now and when this was released. But if we go ahead and look at one of our pictures, you can see that it does work. It's just a little bit slow. So if we tap on this picture, we've got a picture of Xenia. It works. You can't two-finger zoom, but you can tap and it'll zoom in. Works completely fine. Uh, one annoying thing that I did find, though, is if the aspect ratio of your photo is not wall paper optimized it'll it won't set as the wallpaper properly and even if it is it still works kind of bizarrely but that's a minor nitpick and I'm sure that was probably an issue with Lineage OS at the time as well but as you can see gallery app works fine if we keep going you get some more apps you get a messaging app and a phone app now I assume that calls and texts work and I haven't heard anything to the contrary but I haven't actually had the chance to try that yet but I will get on to that and possibly make a follow-up video you've got a music app which I did play some music through here it worked completely fine for all my DRM free music collection there's no codec issues or anything like that 
far as I'm aware, my lossless FLAC files played absolutely fine. Which is someone who likes to listen to music on their phone, fantastic. You've got rep Wi-Fi, which if you do connect a Wi-Fi adapter to this device, that's how you're gonna go ahead and get on the Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and quickly open it up. Now, you do need root access for this to work, and I'm sure a lot of people out there aren't gonna wanna enable root access on their phone, but it is what it is, I guess. If you wanna get onto Wi-Fi, this is how you do it. If we keep going, you get a screen recorder, which I don't know if this works or not. I wouldn't assume it's gonna be a terribly good experience, but I do miss when Lineage OS gave you a full screen recording app. You get your settings app, as you would imagine, you get a sound recorder, and then you get your theme chooser, which is a feature I actually really, really miss from Lineage OS. Now, there's no pre-installed themes, but I assume if you go onto the Asteroid store, you should find some. And while we're talking about themes and stuff, Replicant OS actually has its own branding and built-in wallpapers, and they're quite nice. So let's just go ahead and take a look at those quickly. Now I assume most of these are probably going to be under some permissive license, so if you somehow manage to get them off your phone, I assume you can probably use them for whatever, but probably don't take my word for that exactly. So go ahead, I quite like that wallpaper, let's set that one as the wallpaper. And there you go, you can see that we've set this as our wallpaper. And now that's Replicant OS. Now, as I said, this is a completely free software Android distribution. So if you're really hardcore about free software, maybe this is for you. Although I can't help but feel maybe the demographic for using this is a little bit small. If you're using a phone, you're already inherently compromising your freedoms, whether that be to your carrier or whether that be because they're Theoretically, you can be tracked by cell phone towers and stuff. Now, I don't personally see a problem with that, but a lot of the hardcore free software crowd do. So they basically will just opt not to carry a phone. Additionally, if you use a device like this, the modem and the bootloader are still using proprietary software. So I think at that point, a lot of people are just going to opt to use a regular Android ROM anyway. But with that said, I do still think that there's a demographic of people out there who want as much free software as possible but also do still need to carry a phone of some sort and i think for people like that this is going to be absolutely fine but i think also just for free software nerds like myself this is also going to be quite a cool thing to have a mess around with and to be honest this is still going to be vastly more freedom respecting than the pine phone or the librem 5 both of which i think need more proprietary software than this device does of course both of those devices run linux this still runs Android, but as far as I can tell, there's more free software on here than either one of those devices. And usually most of the devices to run Replicant can be had at like bargain prices. As I said in one of my previous videos, I bought this thing for £25. You could probably get these even cheaper than that if you don't have one in a drawer already. So if you want to mess around with a completely free and open source software device, maybe get one of these devices, install Replicant and see how you get on because I really don't see enough people talking about this Android operating system. Because I do think that it really is one of the most important open source projects at the moment because smart devices are becoming the future. There are people now who don't even have a traditional computer, they just use their phones and their tablets for everything. And Replicant can indeed run on smartphones and tablets. So maybe for people who only wanna run free and open source software, but don't wanna use a traditional computer, well, at some point, even now, this is gonna be an option for those people. It has its problems, yes, but I'm going to say that this thing is completely usable. And just to prove that, I'm going to go ahead and take this device, as it is, running Replicant, and I'm going to use this as my primary phone for a week, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to make an update video on how I got on with that. So stay tuned for that. But with that said, that's it for my review of Replicant. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.